Okay, part two. I do have some memory issues with my phone. It is a chaotic period of my life. I've been, just a brief explanation for the segmented format. I would ideally do this in one take, but yeah. Displaced from New Zealand by catastrophic domestic violence, almost died over a period of five, five years, uh, homeless and starving at points. Uh, I was shown in dreams that 90%, more than 90% of people do not even survive what I went through. And there are videos of people online who are homeless, who had stuff not quite as bad as what I had happen. Like, oh, I lost my job, I lost my family, I lost my house. And they've been homeless for like four years and they can't get out of it. So I did pretty well to survive. <laughs> And uh, I'm doing pretty well to be getting these warnings out here because I've been through my own World War III, all right? So I understand it's not ideal, but please try to understand that I'm going through very difficult times and I'm doing my best. All right. Southern Andean Highlands under a... Oh, yeah, full, full moon tonight. It's behind clouds. It's a bit foggy and there's a palm tree here. So it's actually 9.15, but you can actually see some stuff. <laughs> anyway, right. Nice background. Picking up where we left off, yeah, so it's cyclical, dynamic, landing on islands. So yeah, the C-130s, which I, as New Zealand infantrymen in this dream of my section, I think, I think that's what they call them, not platoons, in the Commonwealth countries, Canada, Commonwealth Anglo-Saxon countries, uh, Anglosphere countries rather, which is Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, in contrast to the United States, where I think they call those platoons. So it's my section, and then my, I, I guess, like, yeah, regiment, like, like two or three hundred guys in total getting off when we arrived on this Pacific island. And then there was a split scene a split scene when we arrived and we landed on the island and I can also see our guys getting off in coastal provinces of China. So it was clear in the split scene format that God has given me via the Holy Spirit in these prophetic dreams before, as was happening this time, that the same events were happening in two separate widely you know, uh, widely separated in distant geographical locales. So if you imagine islands like, can you, see, no, you can see my fingers, okay. Yeah, I'll do a little map in the sky with my fingers. So imagine, you know, islands, you know, say Micronesia, you know, like Hawaii up here, I don't know, Solomons, Guam, closer to Japan, and we're just, we're just island hopping, taking back these islands in the Pacific. Yeah, that's happening on these islands. And then the same thing is happening in China. And that thing is that, yeah, we get off the planes, the C-130s, and the these Australia, it wasn't just, you know, I was getting off my other New Zealand, my guys, my comrades, my brothers in arms. You could feel, really feel the brotherhood and the, the camaraderie at this point. Everyone had been brought together and bound by the crisis. There was a resurgent sense of natural national identity and unity among New Zealanders, Australians, and Americans, respectively. There's also a sense, a wider, a resurgent sense of unity uh, and camaraderie between those three countries as part of Western civilization and the sub-branch of Western civilization, which is the Anglosphere, the five Anglo-Saxon countries, United States being one part, and then UK, Canada, New Zealand, Australia being the other part of that subgroup. You can kind of include Ireland and South, part of South Africa on that to an extent, but the core Anglosphere is those five countries. And Yes, the same thing happening in mainland China and these Pacific Islands and yeah, intense combat. And, and the format in which I was being shown these events, it was uh, the computer game Battlefield 3, which I played with a good friend of mine named Peter <laughs> back from the mid-2000s. Uh, yeah, I played a lot of this game online, multiplayer. My friend and I, Peter, though, we, we used to play, we started out playing this game from this franchise, Battlefield, playing Battlefield 1942, which was the first game in the, the series, which came out around 2003, which is a really good game, actually, if you're into computer games. I'm not really a gamer. Like, I don't like, spend two to three hours playing games every day like some people, but uh, I do enjoy them. And this was symbolic. This is God giving me symbolism because, yeah, basically the cyclical nature is that Japan will have the role, uh, China will have the role of Japan in World War Three, more or less, and what I was shown is, you know, there's that saying, history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. And there's also a saying, quote I like, which is, there's nothing new under the sun. And in many ways, this will be a, a kind of a repeat of World War II with different players in the same roles. And yeah, it was just, it was just impressed upon me that the cyclical nature of history and how, and the final main point I want to make in terms of information I was given in the stream is that we can learn from this. And God gave me an interesting instruction in this regard. 
it, it, it flicks back in time to before we left and we took off from Wellington Airport and there were, you know, columns of Kiwi soldiers re ready to get on the planes. Uh, so, yeah, New Zealand armies, Australian armies and US troops, we were all just getting organized and flying in as we were invading these islands and taking them back and then hitting, invading China and hitting the beaches there. Um, yeah, and fierce fighting as soon as we got off the planes in both places and switched back in time. And, and I saw myself before these planes left, before we got to the, those scenes at the the end of the, it was like the latest point, the furthest point in history in the future I saw in the dream. Yeah, and, and I was talking to my uh, fellow soldiers and I was talking to them about how this is very, I was saying, you know, this is, it's gonna, this is going to be just like World War II in many ways. And I was telling them how we can learn from history and we can learn lessons from history in terms of what Allied soldiers went through in the Pacific theater and we can read books about it. And there's a book I found in a, a library, the library, small library of a Hare Krishna slash just general spiritual uh, center called uh, Govinda Valley, south of Sydney, between Sydney and Wollongong. I was there for about you know, five months in 2018. I found this book when I was there. It was called Kokoda. And that was the book I was holding in my hands. And this book is about, I'll put a link to this to the Wikipedia page or a page about this book in the description box below so you can go check it out if you want. It's all about the Australian campaign on the Kokoda Trail in New Guinea. And it's an example of the sort of literature that we can read and learn from, or that people can read and learn from to prepare for what is coming by, you know, learning the lessons of history so we can know what to expect and, you know, learn lessons from the mistakes, experience and successes of people in the past so that we don't have to learn those lessons through our own mistakes. There's three ways of learning Acquiring knowledge. This is one of the, in wisdom. This is one of the quotes from a quote from one of the ancient Greek philosophers. I forget which. Basically, something like uh, uh, teaching. I forget what they said about that. And they said uh, wisdom, which is noblest, just sort of you know insight, meditation, direct downloads from God, or and and then experience through making mistakes, which is bitterest. So you want to minimize the amount of knowledge you acquire through making mistakes. You want and learn as much as you can from wisdom and teachings from others so that you learn from their mistakes so you don't have to make them. It's more efficient that way. So yeah, that was the final part of the message in the streams that yeah, we should, people should look at before this happens, reading literature and understanding what's coming because there will be so many similarities. And all right, so I have some other notes I'm going to refer to to finish this video off here. Oh yeah, so one of the notes, uh, the, the current standard issue assault rifle for infantry men in the New Zealand army, which is tiny by the way, it's, it's I think it's only 10,000 people, it's, it's nothing. Man, I'm really gonna need to grow their numbers out. I do know from one of my friends, my Christian New Zealand made army friend who's a major, who's still in the army, talking to him about this, however, that the New Zealand army structure is top heavy, so that they have a particularly, have a high ratio of officers to infantry, so that if in a war situation, they can quickly flesh out and get lots of infantry and they'll have the officer knowledge and staff trained because they take a lot more training and experience. And you need them in that command structure, but yeah, man, they're really going to have to increase the numbers. So the standard issue assault rifle for New Zealand um, infantrymen at the moment is a Steyr, but in, in the dream they had much more advanced weapons by the end of World War III. That said, the fighting was surprisingly old school. It looked very similar to what we saw in World War, Th World War II, hence the, the cover image here. And the reference, symbolic reference from God in the dream to you know World War III being, that's Battlefield Three <laughs> being similar to... World War Two, Battlefield 1942. Yeah, and, and there's an uh, intuitive download piece of wisdom I had. My friend Don here in Vilcabamba calls these, quote, Holy Spirit one-liners. So a Holy Spirit one-liner I had in the last year is that just uh, revenge is demonic, justice is divine. So revenge tends to be brutal, barbaric, unreasonable, and disproportionate, whereas justice is civilized, reasonable, proportional and it's, it's, it's like it's the difference between you know shooting someone in a war versus committing a war crime and you know taking them aside and torturing them for five hours before you kill them which is not not cool and not okay so yeah the, the true warriors fight with that, that element inherently they don't necessarily understand it consciously of justice as opposed to that of hate and revenge which leads to her terrible atrocities and barbarism you know war is always messy and not fun but uh there can be a particularly demonic nature to it that doesn't need to be there so 
The reason I bring this up, though, is yet there will be this anger within among the Australian, New Zealand, and American troops, respectively, at this part of the war. I mentioned before that Hoyt and Sigmund video where he was showing the American troops, troops hitting the beach in Sochi, which is on the Black Sea coast in the south of Russia, and they were basically killing everything that moved, he saw, and they were just pissed. So put a link below in, a, in the description box to a video from a movie called Elite Squad 2, The Enemy Within, which is a great South American film. Really good one. I would highly recommend it. Show, which deals with a lot with the corruption which is the probably the biggest issue for the the societies down here and uh, anyway the, if you watch the clip it's the main character the protagonist is confronting a corrupt cop uh, towards the end of the movie after his son is almost killed when this corrupt politician sends guys assassins out to assess to assassinate the protagonist and they but they miss that and, and instead they accidentally almost kill his son he's saying you know, like you you basically you mother effer okay i'll just swear i don't do this much you motherfucker like you know um if my son dies i'm gonna kill everyone well imagine watch that clip if you're interested and then imagine his son did die and what he's gonna do so it's kind of going to be like taken in terms of you know like what's that quote from Liam neeson you know i I have a very special set of skills. I will find you and I will kill you. It's a promise. It's, there is going to be a bit of that vibe. I mean, they're going to be really pissed. I'm not glorifying that. It's not good. And But our guys are going to want payback and it's going to, you know, lost everything. It's worst case scenario beyond, beyond that. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, and presumably this is, presumably this is a large part of why we're doing this, you know, like going into China. Um, as well as retaking these islands in the Pacific. You know, it's like, all right, you want to see how it feels? We're going to, yeah, we're going to do to you what you did to us. And yeah, Hoyt had a dream where he was showing American troops fighting in China and the cities looked like they'd almost been nuked. They were just rub and rubble. And I've seen comments from other people online and comment section for YouTube videos about these things who were showing scenes of allied troops fighting in China in World War Three, And there was a French sniper and a skyscraper. So it was, yeah, it's just very heavy fighting and there will be an element of retaliation but yeah hopefully as much as possible it's justice and not revenge yeah that, that's enough for now just important to emphasize again yes we, we in the end we do win the war will be a ferric victory so a victory at, at a cost which is tantamount almost to defeat because the losses are so severe but ultimately things do come around we do win which is something hopeful to hang on to we will be going up against a, a, a fascist china and russia i don't care if you understand how corrupt our side is the us and the eu and new zealand australia and i don't like new zealand much and there's so much corruption in our societies i, I can't stand it to the extent the, i can't stand it so much i had to actually leave and i really don't want to go back there but even i can see that you know we're still not as bad as china or russia china's doing genocide on uyghur people in xinjiang and it's west right now they're actually doing genocide and they're going to genocide our people so you know no matter how bad you think it, our side is they're much worse so it's actually it, 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 it's straight up it's good we win and i'm glad we do but you know it's a message, mess, these messages seem dark remember we do win in the end so these are some details that god has shown me via the holy spirit in these prophetic dreams about the events later in the war when we have turned it around the tide has turned and we're starting to win and it's yeah getting towards the end of the war just before the end like we uh, achieve total victory in eurasia and in the pacific theater on these islands so i believe these dreams are warnings i believe they're prophetic Please refer to the description, the disclaimers in the description box below if you have not already done so. And I hope this is of some value. I hope it helps. Hope you're well. And thanks for watching. Cheers.